Rotten Tomatoes aggregates movie reviews and uses them to give every movie a percentage rating indicating their agreed-on quality. But just because something has a low rating on Rotten Tomatoes doesn't mean you shouldn't watch it. This is especially true for genres like science fiction, which tend to get reviewed especially harshly. So we've put together a list of sci-fi movies that are rated quite low on Rotten Tomatoes but are still worth watching. Some of them are good but misunderstood, and some of them are bad but interesting. Either way, don't let the critics dissuade you from giving these movies a look. Speed Racer You've probably heard plenty of defenses of the Wachowski siblings' Speed Racer by now. A bomb upon its 2008 release, it's since become a beloved cult classic. Based on the American localization of a Japanese anime, the movie rejected realism in favor of oversaturated futuristic visuals and characters with looks and names right out of the cartoon. But to the surprise of many, there's no parody or cynicism in Speed Racer. The characters are played as real people with emotions and believable motivations, and Speed Racer in particular is a very sincere young man who just wants to be the best at the only thing he's good at. The racing scenes are a delightful mix of speed, color, and editing. Speed Racer isn't just a weird movie worth watching, it's a genuinely great film that the public just failed to appreciate upon its release. Last Action Hero Arnold Schwarzenegger was a megastar in 1993, and Last Action Hero was intended to be a huge summer blockbuster, but it became a legendary flop. Critics hated it, and audiences just didn't have time for it. What's interesting about Last Action Hero is ultimately what makes it a failure. It's a parody of over-the-top action films that allows itself to become an over-the-top action film. It satirizes overused tropes and then turns around and uses them with barely a wink. Schwarzenegger plays Jack Slater, the hero of a series of action films who finds his way into the real world, but also turns up as himself in the real-world scenes. Wait, where are you going? I'll be back. Ha! You didn't know I'm gonna say that, did you? That's what you always say. It doesn't all quite hold together, but it's still entertaining, and some excellent performances along with the grand scale of what it's trying to do narratively make it an interesting watch. Jupiter Ascending Jupiter Ascending is the second Wachowski film on the list, and it won't be at all surprising if it becomes as much of a cult classic as Speed Racer once a little more time has passed. The major flaw of Jupiter Ascending is that it tries to do too much. Mila Kunis stars as Jupiter Jones, a poor girl from Earth who finds out she's next in line for a vast inheritance from outer space. Channing Tatum plays a wolfman from space who is assigned to protect her from the many forces aligned against her. Chief among those forces is Eddie Redmayne, who plays an evil alien alien who's human in appearance but unmistakably reptilian in demeanor. There are certainly valid criticisms about the movie. The plot is definitely convoluted, and some of the dialogue isn't great. But a lot of the critics that contributed to Jupiter Ascending's low Rotten Tomatoes score seem to have a problem with the basics of the space opera subgenre. It may not be a perfect movie, but time will almost certainly be kind to it. Event Horizon Despite its bad reviews, Event Horizon might be the most frightening outer space horror film that doesn't involve facehuggers or xenomorphs. In fact, there are no aliens in this movie at all, unless you count an unseen and shapeless evil. The Event Horizon was a ship equipped with a new kind of interdimensional warp drive, which disappeared on its test flight seven years earlier. Now it's reappeared near Neptune, and another ship is sent to investigate. What the crew finds is a ghost ship that seems to have recently returned from hell itself. One by one, they encounter manifestations of their dreams and nightmares, and most of them don't survive. This is a grisly and disturbing movie that's definitely not for everyone. But if you like horror, the haunted house in space premise is interesting, and the scares are definitely definitely there. What do you think you're doing, Doug? You wanted to know where the ship has been. So now you'll find out. Masters of the Universe Masters of the Universe is a big, glorious mess. Adapted from the popular line of toys, it probably earned its low Rotten Tomatoes rating, but it's still pretty fun, especially if you're into that Canon Films VHS aesthetic. Dolph Lundgren plays He-Man, the barbarian who must defeat Skeletor, played here by Frank Langella. You dare threaten her life? I dare anything! I am Skeletor! 
The film contains very little of the mythology from the Masters of the Universe cartoon and comics, but it tells a pretty fun, action-oriented story about an eternal war in a sci-fi fantasy world spilling into 1980s Earth. Most of the cast is quite good, and Lundgren's physical acting is perfect for the character of He-Man, even if you can't always understand what he's saying. Gwildor, can this device of yours get us to Grayskull? Certainly! To the sorceress? Honestly, that kind of sums up the whole movie. It doesn't always make sense, but you want to keep looking at it. Howard the Duck Howard the Duck is remembered as one of the biggest bombs of all time. Based on the Marvel comic by Steve Gerber, it was intended to be an animated film. However, producer George Lucas owed Universal a big summer release, so he decided to just have his special effects people build a duck suit and make the film live action. The movie starts as an off-kilter comedy and then escalates into an action film until it climaxes with a battle against a giant monster. Unfortunately, it lacks the strong writing and cast of veteran comedians needed to make that all work. Never Nevertheless, Howard the Duck is worth a watch just for how weird it is. Don't shed any tears over me, Toots! You can wallow in your own self-pity! Right!